Dan Gordon will unleash the superhero in you. In each episode, Dan will challenge and inspire you to be the greatest version of yourself. Dan takes you into the minds of the world's most innovative thinkers, unlocking their secrets for living fearlessly and achieving massive personal success. So get ready for Shock to the System. Please welcome your host, the coach's coach, Dan Gordon. Right now, in this moment, you have the power to live your life unlimited. Shock to the System is about pulling back the curtain on your world and discovering what you're truly capable of achieving. In the next hour, I promise to open your mind, to set your thinking on fire, to show you your superhero self that you've been hiding from yourself. Come with me and let's enter a new reality where success is nothing but a mindset. Strap in, we're putting a shock to your system. Let's go. My name is Dan Gordon, and let me start with a bottom line truth. If there's something that you want in life, really want, then in order to get it, you're going to have to feel afraid. Now, when I started telling people about the show, they were like, ah, shock to the system. That's a great title. What's it about? I said, simple. The show's about you. And they're like, me? I'm like, yeah, you. You and success. But it's about the success that you want and don't already have. Think of it this way. Imagine right now, you're standing on the edge of a cliff. That's you. That's your life. Now, way over across the gap on the other cliff is everything you want. All that you've been dreaming of, from money to love and everything in between, that's on the other cliff. And the only thing spanning the gap between you and success is an old, dangerous rope bridge. And that bridge is, is straight up horrifying. You want to cross it, but you don't dare. Now, we've been told in life that it's weak to be scared. So you don't want to admit to yourself that you're too afraid to cross that bridge. Go after what you want. So instead, you make up little stories about why you can't have it. And those stories always start with something like this. Well, I'm just not ready yet. Now, I would, but I don't have the money. I, I can't right now. I don't have the time. I'm just going to have to think about it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm just being lazy right now. When you say these things, they don't feel like stories because they all make sense. Like, if you want a Tesla but don't have the money to buy it, that doesn't sound like a story. It's just the truth. But the truth sounds a lot different when you bump up the urgency. Like, you need a kidney transplant. How would that go? Oh, I'd get that kidney and save my life. I just can't afford it. Would you say, I don't have time for a kidney operation? Or, yeah, I'll, I'll get that kidney. I'm just being lazy right now. You see, we'll take any risk to stay alive. But very rarely will we take a risk to truly live. Overcoming the fear of going for what you want in life is like beating an addiction. You can't do it alone. You need help. You need someone by your side who can navigate you every step of the way crossing that bridge. That's what I do every day, all day for my clients. They have a coach. That's why they succeed. I've been doing this 20 years and I have a coach. That's why I succeed. You need a coach. Someone to show you the way all the way across that bridge to the life you want to live. If this makes sense, I want to give you something that I know will help. It's my blueprint for life called Jumping the Gap, Kill Your Story, and Take Action. I want to help you get what you want in life, and this will show you the way. To get it, just send a text to my phone, 213-409-8366, and just text the word GAP. GAP 213 409 8366 and text the word GAP GAP. So let me tell you a little bit about my guests. My first guest is on Zoom from Sandy Springs, Georgia, 
And I am just delighted and so honored to have Lucy Hall on my show. Lucy is the founder and CEO of Mary Hall Freedom House. Since 1996, Lucy has helped over 10,000 women and children break the addiction to poverty, to homelessness, to drugs, but, but even more than that, break the addiction to their internal story that says, I can't. Lucy is the subject of a new documentary called Hope Village, which was produced by my other guest, who I will introduce to you in just a minute. You're going to want to listen to what Lucy has to say, because she's going to tell you how she's helped all these people break their addiction and get past their story. And let's be clear, their stories are much bigger than your stories. So if she can help all those people, Lucy's going to have some really unique insight into helping you too. Lucy, welcome to Shock to the System. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Dan, for having me. It is a pleasure. So, Lucy, I'm going to get right back to you because I want to introduce my other guest, Ricarlo Handy. Ricarlo is a superstar in the entertainment world. He started working in the film industry at just 14 years old. That's amazing. By 18, he was directing music videos, commercials, films. He's, he's done it all. So why is Ricarlo here? Because he knows firsthand about addiction. And because, like Lucy, Ricardo found a higher calling than just cranking out entertainment. With his company, Sunwise Media, Ricardo makes films that inspire social change with stories about people doing amazing things in the world. Ricardo made a documentary called Hope Village about Lucy Hall going from addict to creating the Mary Hall Freedom House. Ricardo, welcome to Shock to the System. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. So I watched the documentary Hope Village last night, and um, I'm not ashamed to, to say I was crying through it. It was, it was just so touching and, and amazing. Um, and I can't wait to read your book, Lucy, Hope, uh, Hope Dealers. Um, before we jump, uh, jump in, I, I just want you to know this. This might be a little bit of a different kind of interview uh, because I want to focus on addiction as being something we all suffer with. And it's something that we all experience. And addiction isn't just those people. You know, watching the documentary, I mean, um, it, that, and that was really helpful because there's some high achievers on that show. Like, they're just not those people. They aren't lazy people who, who, who are like, well, you know, I can either watch Tiger King or shoot heroin, so that's what I'm going to do, right? You know, like, it wasn't that. Um, every one of us is an addict. We're all addicted to something. And that understanding addiction is the key and breaking our addictions is the key to jumping that gap, moving through the things that are difficult and finding the success that we're, that we're, that we're seeking. So is it okay with both of you if we talk about addiction, about the road to prosperity? Can we do that? Absolutely. Outst yeah. Outstanding. So first, Lucy, would you give, give the audience um, just the basics of your story, like where you started, what happened, and how you created this masterpiece of the Mary Hall Freedom House. Absolutely. Again, Dan, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, my name is Lucy Hall, and I'm a person in long-term recovery. And what that means, it's been 30 years since I've had the need to use any mind or mood altering substance. I think, like you, the success of life is do what you do best. We're all here for a purpose. And so my purpose was, as a result of seeing addiction take my mother's life and two of my brother's lives, it was important for me when I found the way out of that darkness was to then show other people. And even today by the movie Hope Village and the book Hope Dealer, it is my goal and intent to help other people realize recovery is possible. And to your point, everybody's addicted to something. Everybody knows what it's hard, like to come back from something difficult. So we're all in recovery or we're still in the addiction. And I like to tell people, you know, if you are in denial, you're in the, the, the addiction. If you're in recovery, it's because you know what it took to come back from something difficult. That's, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, um, Lucy's website is hopevillageproject.com. On that, you can watch her movie. You can buy her book. Uh, you can learn all about the uh, Mary Hall um, uh, 
um, project that she uh, that she does. Um, Ricardo, essentially same question. Where did you start? What happened? And how did you create this this masterpiece called Hope Hope Village? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, I I came to it a whole different pathway. You know, I, I'm I've always been interested in telling stories, and that's been my gift. You know, for for a long time. But this story, I think, was the first time I had a story that was like. No matter if anyone agrees with me, no matter if I can sell it or you know make it turn a turn a nickel you know mm-hmm. into a dollar, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna just make it happen because it's an important message for the world, um, and so and so luckily for me, you know when I was in my you know uh, situation with my father, and you'll learn in the film, you know I had to lean on Lucy, you know to to understand mm-hmm. this process. I think that one of the things that I think you know just kind of relating back to you know, the whole I can't story that that was kind of for me. And this was one of the first challenges I had in life where I didn't know what to do. Like I didn't I couldn't Google. I couldn't Google my way out of it. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. You know mm. what I mean? Like as far as like, you know, here's my dad. He's, you know, deep in an addiction. And I, I, I want to save his life, but I don't know how to do it. And so I leaned on Lucy during that time. And that's ultimately was the the, the, the reason why the film got made. So um, I'm, I want to point out something that you just talked about, because Look, you're a high achiever. Mm-hmm. Any person that starts in the entertainment business at 14 is a high achiever. It's in your blood. Mm-hmm. And the thing, and a lot of my clients are, are are high achievers. And the things that high achievers struggle with is when they don't feel in control. Right. Right. When you can't solve a problem with your mind, it is terribly disorienting. Yeah. Because you have been able to figure out everything. And when you can't, it's um, it your your mind kind of turns in on on itself, you know. And I've seen this happen with successful people over and over again. They like start attacking themselves. Like, why can't I figure this out? Like, mm-hmm, why can't mm-hmm. I push through it? Like you said, I can't, I I can't Google it. Right? right, right. So can you give me um, just a a brief synopsis of how you handled this struggle of like I cannot do this on my own. Like mm. I can't will through it. How did you like surrender to the fact? That you couldn't figure it out. I think that what I what I surrendered to was that that it wasn't going to be fixed right away. That was the first thing I had to surrender to. Mm. I think I was trying to find a quick fix. And Most high achievers do. <laughs> and 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 what I what I had to surrender to was like you know in real life I had to let my dad sit in a place that he was uncomfortable for a long time. What you realize is that you couldn't do it on your own. Right. And the next logical step was to see who could help you. Right. Right. So yeah. th- that's a, ter- a, tr- a a tremendous amount of of surrender there. Yes. Right. And that was probably not an easy thing. No. Great. Thank you. So, Lucy, I got yes, a million sir. questions for for you, but the. The, the, the thing that really struck me while I was watching the documentary and I was taking fierce notes, what is it that most people don't know about the addict? And I'm not talking about addiction, but what, what don't people know about the addict? I think the biggest thing is that nobody wants to be an addict, Dan. You know, it's like I didn't grow up and say, oh, yeah, by the, by the time I'm 18, I'm going to be smoking crack or, you know, I want to be a crackhead when I grow up. Nobody wants to be an addict. Even as you said to your audience today, they don't even want to identify as an addict because we've made it such a bad thing to be. Yeah. So I think the thing that people must realize is that addiction is what it is. We're all addicted to something, whether it's caffeine, whether it's co- uh, chocolate, whether it's sex, whether it's gambling. We, it, it, you might want to say like the sin starts off small mm-hmm. and it gets up to murder mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, it's petty crime versus a felony. But nonetheless, we are all addicted to something. And when we realize there is freedom and liberty and just being honest, which is yeah. the first step. Yeah. Like, you know, as an addict, your best thinking is the worst thing to do. Right? Absolutely. Right. And Absolutely. I'm gonna, I get a little laugh from uh, from Ricardo here, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's like, you know, and it's even more troublesome if you've been successful in life because your best right. thinking has worked perfectly, right? Exactly. But it, it's sort of like you're flying an airplane and suddenly it turns into a rocket ship, right? And suddenly, like, I don't know how to operate any of these controls, right? This thing that has been been working is no longer working. Exactly. Right? And so, what is in the addict's heart? What is the addict desire? Connection. 
I think every addict needs and desires connection. When you said in the beginning of your show, what's that one thing we all want? You know, think about it right now. What's that one thing we all want? For me, I said love. Because mm. you can't get enough of that. Yeah. You know, you just can't get enough of that. And and so I'm a person who leads with it because I need it. Okay. So I always say, give that thing you need. If you need to be connected to people, then go connect with people. You know, so what is it for heroin addicts and entrepreneurs alike? What stops them from getting help? I think the thing that stops people from getting help is ignorance, meaning lack of knowledge Mm -hmm. that help is available. That's another reason why this documentary and this book is so important, because I know wisdom is power. Knowledge is power to people, just like the entrepreneur. When they figure it out, it's powerful. Yeah. You know, and so knowledge is power. And I think the heroin addict, as well as the entrepreneur, both want knowledge. We need the knowledge to know we can do it because that then unlocks the door to power. How do you move people from I can do it on my own to I need help? I have a saying, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, call me. (laughs) But how do people know when they're sick and like, I mean, how do you get people to the point where they're like, okay, I'm sick and tired now? It's called, I call it the language of recovery. And we do a whole part of, we do a whole training on that, the language of recovery. And it's this, the, the conversation goes something like this. So how well is that working for you? Mm. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being it's working really well, one being it's not working at all. Where are you? And usually people will say, well, I'm a four. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, a four. So how do we move to a five? Yeah. What what did you do to get to a four? So again, it's motivational interviewing in the context of helping people realize that they can do more, not looking at how bad things are, but look at let's look at how to gain more. Like immediately as I started watching the movie last night, I was captivated. Can I share what I saw in the first three minutes of the movie? Absolutely. Okay. So you're six years old. And your mom dies from what? Alcoholism. Okay. Cirrhosis of the liver. Right. Then your brother Larry dies uh, the day before he graduates from high school. What does Larry die from? Hepatitis, which was dirty needles. Then your brother Steve dies from what? Overdose from heroin. Then your aunt dies from what? Alcoholism. Then your grandmother dies from what? I really don't know, but I believe it was the same. Okay. You know, but... There were a lot of people who died by the age of 13, as you just listed. So why not you? I mean it, Lucy. Uh, why why yeah. are you still alive? Like, it doesn't make sense. Right. And, I, like, and, and I'm not trying to be funny here. But, no, like, I, you. like, I know um, things are generational, right? Hurt people hurt, hurt, hurt people. You know, battered kids become battering parents. Uh, right. People who grow up in entertainment families tend to get into entertainment. People who grow up in military families tend to get into military. People who grow up in addicted families tend to die. How did you not die? God had another plan. I, I mean, I really, you know, I cannot give credit to Lucy doing and knowing anything other than by the grace of God, he had another plan for my life. And when I recognized that there was a solution, I got into the solution. That's why I want to hold up recovery in this world. I don't think many people out there in addiction even know recovery is possible. And that's why I want my life to be an example. That's why I think I've been successful in helping over 10, now 15,000 women recover because they look at me as an example. They realize that, okay, if she can, I can. Lucy, I've got to push back on this a little yeah, bit. Like, come on with it's it. It's beautiful. Uh, I believe that God intervened in a huge way, but something else happened. Something happened between, because you were using, right? Yeah. A big what, like crack, right? Yeah. And look, I've never done crack, but it's got to be great if people are using it, right? And so there was something that said to you, I got to stop doing this. Like you had to take the first step. What? And this is really important, Lucy, because this is the first step that entrepreneurs do not take. Like they're like, Correct. man, I, I want to make more money. I want to be more successful. I want to have this. Uh, it's just not working, right? Because they're lost in their addiction. You were lost in your addiction. What happened? What, what was the spark? 
you have the right to remain silent. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I couldn't imagine you taking my freedom. I, I just couldn't imagine being locked up. Um, and, for and, me, that was the bottom. Right. So, so something happened in your head that said, wait a second, there could be a different way of living, right? Okay, that's the thing that's really key, and that's what I want to bring to my audience right now. Something happened, something's going to happen, it's probably already happened, and it's going to happen again that says there is a different way of living, and this right. different way of living is going to be difficult, it's uncomfortable, it's unfamiliar, but I'm curious enough about it to, to try to begin to make a shift. Ricarlo, I, I like you're you're I so appreciate you're just sitting here, you got your hands over your mouth, but you're ready to explode. Please share. Well, no, I I'm just just hearing you and hearing Lucy, I, I know that there's that motivation inside of us that 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 for Lucy, I really do believe it also had to do with her daughter. I know for some entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and for me myself, like, you know, yeah, making money is important. But you need to have a little bit something more to motivate you to want to be massively successful at anything. You know what I mean? Like, if you just wanted to get your bills paid, um, that's not going to be a bit motivation yeah. enough to build, build a big right. business. Here's the really interesting thing about, about wants and about addiction. Mm -hmm. When you get what you want, it never seems quite right. Right? Because that thing that you thought that dopamine was telling you this is going to bring me happiness doesn't. I would guess that you thought that the crack was the problem. And I would guess that when you got off it or when people get clean, they start to realize, oh, wait a second. That actually wasn't the problem. That was just masking the problem. And that now that you're clean, now you actually get to work on the problem. Would you say that's accurate? I would, definitely. Okay. Absolutely. So you know, like success, like, oh, if I can just have more money, if I can stop worrying about right. paying my, my bills, everything will be fine, right? Right. right. You know, like, right. look at the amount of plastic surgery that goes on in this town, right? <laughs> like, okay, you know, if my boobs are bigger, my butt is perfect, right? If, if I have, like, everything's going to be fine, and then they get it, right? right? And they don't, and it's like, oh, wait a second, that's not it. Right. Right. So what was the thing for you, for Carlo? It, well, you know, like I, like you said, I've been in the business of entertainment my whole life, and I've been able to do a lot of different jobs or have a lot of different successes. And every time I reached one of those pinnacles, I thought that's where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And it, what when I got there wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And the, and the reward wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So, like, let me, for example, I, I've had the pleasure of creating television shows, right, which is a dream of a lot of people. Yeah. Right? Um but 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 really what I found what I wanted was not just to create something for me or have the the pat on the back or the out of boy or the award but I wanted to create some sustainable residual income for my for my family mm. and create an impact on the world. Why an impact? Why was it important? Well, because the truth is it's like no matter how much money you make in life or no matter how much success you make in life that's not the thing that that stays here when you're gone. The thing that stays at last, we don't remember Martin Luther King Jr. because he made a bunch of money, right? <laughs> and we remember him because he had an impact that continues to to resonate. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me, I, I, I came to a realization was that, you know, I could spend my life making a lot of money, but there's a reason why there's certain shows or certain projects I don't do. You know what I mean? They're, 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 I, I have kind of a, a standard of, what I want to create in the world, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And if I have that standard of what I want to create in the world, then then I should be figuring out a way to not only do that, but also make money doing it. And and that's kind of that whole sacred commerce con concept yeah. where 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 if I'm going to spend my, you know, 20 hours a day, you know, you know, 100 hours a week, you know, working, you know what I mean? Let's let's let that time have some value when I'm gone. So in that way. Getting clean and making money are essentially the same thing in terms of a goal, right? Yeah. That this is the thing that's going to solve my problems, right? If I can just get off the heroin or the crack or the, or the alcohol, then, then all the problems are just going to go away, right? If I can just make enough money, mm -hmm. right, then all the problems will, 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 will go away. But both for Carlo and Lucy— you have been in the in the position of recognizing that that's not the that's not the truth, no. and that's so important for my audience and the people that I work with, 
because they have to understand that this thing that that you want is not going to give you a, a sustainable sense of feeling good and fulfilled. And purpose. Right. And purpose is key. So, Lucy, how do you infuse people who are just thinking, I just want to get clean, I want to get my kids back, I want to get a car, like all the stuff. How do you shift them from that to, to going after purpose? Uh, one, again, sharing my experience, strength, and hope in, in the regard to helping people realize we all have a purpose. And usually it's what you're good at, what you would do even if you didn't get a paycheck. What Ricardo just said, at the end of the day, you know, I could have worked 10 hours, 12 hours today, and I loved every minute of it. Why? Because I knew at the end of the day that it had a purpose. It was helping people. I was moving Mary Hall Freedom House along mm -hmm. to a greater purpose. Like I came to St. Pete, you know, I'm down in St. Pete, like I told you guys. And I thought I was just coming to chill out with my girlfriend, got here and got to know you got another purpose in being here. You got to work. So yes. it, it really is really helping people to realize what they're passionate about. You know, I think that's important to recognize mm. what you're passionate yes. about, what your giftedness is. You know, I'm an encourager like you, Dan, when you opened up. I love to encourage people. I love to help people tap into their purpose in life. I, I'm, I'm a hope dealer. I got my bracelet on. I tell people every day I went from a dope dealer to a hope <laughs> dealer. Why? Because that's who I am. Uh, Lucy, uh, just as, as a tangent, you said something in the in the documentary I thought was just great. What is tore up from the floor up? <laughs> I know. I know. I sound incredibly white when I say that, and my apologies. Uh, what does that mean? I like. I want to. I want to put that into my into my lexicon. Okay. Tell, tell me how to use that. If a woman needed help right now in Atlanta, where would she go? She'd go to the ER, go to jail, under a bridge, turn a trick. She can come in here at eleven o'clock tonight, tore up from the floor up. As long as she don't act up, we can still stay. <laughs> you okay. So when people walk in thinking they got it going on and you look at them and you know, doggone well, they are tore up from the floor up, meaning you a hot mess. <laughs> you a hot yeah. mess. You thinking you all that, you know, when, or when people are sitting there BSing you and you know it, you know, mm. you know it. It's like, that's when you got to call them to the carpet. It's like, baby girl, you here because you tore up from the floor up. And let's get real with that. So I, I love that. I, I'm going to have to call you offline and work with you on that so I can say it in the right way. Because yeah. clearly I'm not even close. Yeah, Dan is referring to a, a piece in the movie. It's, it's, a, it's a hilarious moment. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I'm, you know, no spoilers here, but it, it, there, there's so much in that movie. And look. Uh, Lucy and Ricarlo, they're not here for their health. They're not here just to support me. Um, they have uh, an incredible uh, documentary that they want to talk about. And, an and Lucy has an incredible foundation, uh, the Mary Hall Freedom House. And so I want you guys to uh, talk about what this is that, that you've done. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, have at it. Yeah, I, I'll just jump in and just share, you know, first of all, thank you for having us, Dan. I mean, this is a great conversation to have because I do think it's important for people to know about the re recovery and how it relates to their life. Because for me, which is why we made this documentary, I never thought of addiction or, or any of this as my problem or anything I had to think about. And so when it hit my life personally and I didn't know what to do, I didn't feel like there was any resources out there. I couldn't Google my way out of it like I said before. And so that's what this film is. It's a resource. It's a tool. It is a great story. As Dan shared, it's entertaining. You know, I, I come from television, so it, you know it's something that uh, that you, that's going to keep your attention and be entertaining. But as well, it, you can watch it and really um, glean some information from it on not only how you could help a loved one if that's an issue that they struggle with, help yourself if that's an issue you struggle with, or relate some of the tools that Lucy talks about to your life. In anything, because we all need to going to need to recover from a lot of different things, you know, during this time mm -hmm. period now, whether it's you know the economy or or um, or just relationships or, or just you know, or, or frame of mind. Yeah, all yeah. of it. You know, Your depression. Mind. You know, uh, alcohol sales are through the roof now. Yeah. Apparently, you know, everyone nothing has to do. So this is a this is a it turned out to be a super timely project. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so we you know the book is uh, Lucy's memoir. 
that also each chapter is dedicated to, you know, actually answering a question that people have. Hope dealer. Or, you know, yeah. Hope dealer, a, a complete guide uh, from rehab to recovery. And then the film. Um, but, but, but yes, yeah, so you can go to our, our website, hopevillageproject.com. You know, you can follow us on social media at Hope Village Project on Instagram, Facebook. Um, and you can get the film on all platforms, you know, mm-hmm. um, um, Amazon, Google Play, or uh, iTunes. And you can, you know, go ahead and, and watch it, check it out for yourself. And I, I think it's a project that is powerful no matter where you are. In right, life. right. Yeah. And I'm, you know, look, the, the easiest way to find it is, is, is just go to hopevillageproject.com. It's right there. You can watch the movie, you can buy the book. Um, and look, I. I'll be honest. I don't. I don't like documentaries, but I watch. I. I, I honestly. I. I watch this because I want to be. I. I wanted to be prepared for our, our. Our show, but it didn't take long. Like I said, the first three minutes of the documentary hooked me. Mm-hmm. Right. Very good, mm-hmm. and it's. It's mm-hmm. a very compelling story, and so I, I. I encourage everybody to watch this. It's just. It's just a great story. It's just. It's not really about addiction. Um, it, it, it is really about people and it's about you, right? It's what this show is about. It's about you. And, and it is about how you, um, go into the things that you struggle with and then come back out of them again, a greater version of yourself. Yeah. And, and Lucy, that's what I see you creating. I see you creating hope. Right. And hope is the most important thing, because I have to hope that there's a greater version of myself out there or I'm not going to try to go for it. You know, look, I mean, I'm I I am I'm probably the lowest rung of an addict. Like I'm a food addict. You know, I go to I go to Overeaters Anonymous. Like I have the easiest addiction. Right. Um, But it's also the it's it's also rough. But but I get this sense of, well, I can handle this. I can just go on a diet. Right. Mm. But the, but the truth is, I just keep going on diets and gaining weight, going on diets and gaining weight. Right. Until I surrendered to the fact mm-hmm. that I cannot do this on my own. Mm-hmm. Right. And nobody out there, whatever it is that you want, you cannot do it on your own. Your best thinking is not helping you. And that's mm-hmm. what Lucy and Ricarlo uh, have created in, in this in in both the program uh the um, the Mary Hall Freedom House and in the and in the movie, and um, and both of you have done uh, an incredible service uh, in my uh, in my heritage. We call it a mitzvah, a good mm-hmm. deed. Uh, you guys have a special gift for my audience, for everybody who is who is who is listening. It's their guide to recovery, five critical tips to stage a personal comeback in life business, and broken relationships. So I'm going to read this and then uh, share it with my clients and tell them I thought it up myself. Um, <laughs> so to get the art of bouncing back, uh, just send a text to my phone, same, same number as before, 213-409-8366, and text the word HOPE, H-O-P-E, HOPE. Text HOPE to 213-409-8366, and also text the word GAP, GAP to that same number, and you'll get my blueprint, uh, Jumping the Gap, Kill Your Story, and Take Action. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you for giving me the time, and thank you for giving me your attention. And in a larger sense, thank you for being who you are in the world. You Mm. You didn't have to do what you did, right? Lucy, you didn't have to recover. And then once you recovered, you didn't have to go out there and help other people. Right? You could have just kept your recovery on your own. Ricardo, you could have just kept your meteoric rise to, to fame and fortune, but instead you decided to create something to help other people. And, and this is, look, I was drag kicking and screaming to helping other people. I, I am the most self-involved person you'll ever, I'll get my girlfriend on the phone right now. She will back that up. But what I have found is that being in service is the ultimate in, um, in feeling fulfilled in life. Yeah. Like Absolutely. once you have the money, once you clean yourself up, if it's only you, it is an empty existence. Yeah. You know, and, and this is, this is coming from a guy who did not believe that. And so, um, uh, last words before we, before we wrap. Yeah. I, I think, I think just in listening to everything that we've talked about, there's one word that kind of came to mind to kind of wrap everything up is accountability. Hmm. You know what I mean? If, if you're only accountable to yourself, you know, it's going to be hard to really grow. 
right? But the more people that you're accountable to and the more you are sharing about what you want to create and getting that help from your community, your family, you know, I think the the, the greater your goals mm-hmm. and the, and the um, and the easier they'll be to accomplish because you'll have a, a tribe and community that's holding you accountable. It's tough, right? Yeah, like it is tough to reach out for help mm-hmm. because we, you know, we have this 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 concept in America of the self made person, mm-hmm. right? The the person who forged it out on their own, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And nothing great was 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 ever created alone. No, nothing great. You know, no. like who do we got? We got the Wright brothers, <laughs> right? You know, right. we got uh, Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs that created Apple. Right, we, right. we have uh, Neil Armstrong. And uh, Buzz Aldrin, you know, right. we have Shaggy and Scooby Doo, right? We have all you know, <laughs> nothing right, great right. was ever created alone. Like right. you need help, you know. Like go to a twelve-step meeting, get a coach, uh, get a mentor, right? You know, do something, right. but reach out Our and connection. say, "Help me." Yeah, Lucy, last Thanks. words, please. Yeah. So in me closing, one I would want to say, like I am, I'm a hope dealer. Mm-hmm. So in this day and age, I really want people to know to stay hopeful you know, and stay connected because we all need to be connected to one another, you know, and and like you said, Dan, I love that. That's my pastor's tagline is be helpful, all three of those. And it's so real as we help others, we in turn receive so much help. I'm I'm grateful to you, Dan, for having us today. And I I wish everybody well, stay hopeful, watch the movie, get the book and um, become a hope dealer. Like I said, you know, you can get your t-shirt and your bracelet if you get all the products. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Hope Village, join me in that. Yeah, that's um, Hope Village Project. So what have we learned? We, we've we said it all. We've covered everything. We've solved all the problems of the world. What have we, what have <laughs> we learned? Um, we've learned to, to set a vision for yourself. And let's just call that hope, right? Uh, in the entrepreneurial world, we tend to call that goals. But I call it a vision. I, I call the, and I refer to it, as uh, the Emerald City, right? This thing that lives out there just beyond, um, you know, grasp. And this thing that you head towards. And you're always heading towards it. And you go through the trials, right? The flying monkeys and the trees and the, you know, and, and all the other difficulties as you're heading towards this Emerald City, this vision of yourself as a greater being, um, as, a, as a more uh, fulfilled person. And you just keep heading towards it. And you're going to struggle, right? There's always going to be a struggle. There's always going to be people saying no. There's always going to be someone who says it can't be done, right? And there's going to be a million reasons to quit. And the reasons are going to make sense. And you're going to fall down. And when you fall and, and when you fall down and when there's snot and tears on the carpet, it's not about kicking yourself in the ass and getting back up. It's about being kind. It's about saying... I am struggling. I need help. I can't do this on my own. I'm going to hold that vision, and I'm going to reach out. And so if, if we've learned anything, it is um, asking for help is key. And like you said, we were not meant to do this alone. We were meant to be in community. It is in our DNA to move through your addiction, whatever it is that you are addicted to. And probably for most of us, it's just wanting to feel good. It's not about kicking yourself in the ass. It's about reaching out and saying, help me. I want to thank the two of you. I want to thank my sponsors who believe in shock to the system and support what we're, what we're, what we're doing here. And I uh, want to tell you a little bit about our next show. So for our next show, have you ever wondered what it would be like to be super rich? I mean, just like having so much money, you can just buy whatever you want whenever you you want it. Like, have you ever wondered what it would be like to never say, I can't afford that? Like, what is that like? And, And more importantly, how do those people think? Like, what's the mental process that brought them to that wealth? Well, you're going to be really surprised when you find out how people like that think. You're going to be even more surprised to discover that actually you can think that way too. My, my next guest is a man named John Shin, and John is the author of the book, How Rich Asians Think. And he's the producer of the movie, Think and Grow Rich. Now, John is the only person who was allowed to make that movie by the Napoleon Hill F- Foundation. And if you don't know who, Nap- who Napoleon Hill is, um, 
you, you, you better listen to the next show. Uh, John is a good friend. He's a mentor. And we're super lucky that he's agreed to share his knowledge and his experience with us. And uh, he, is, uh, he is the next guest on Shock to the System. You're definitely going to want to listen to that one. Uh, once again, to get Lucy and Ricardo's book, The Art of Bouncing Back, Five Critical Tips to Stage a Personal Comeback in Life, Business, and Broken Relationships, text the word HOPE to my phone, 213-409-8366, HOPE, H-O-P-E, 213-409-8366. And while you're at it, to that number, also text the word GAP, G-A-P, and you'll get Jumping the Gap, Kill Your Story, and Take Action. My name is Dan Gordon. You're listening to Shock to the System. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, and the thought to give yourself the boost to live the life that you want to live, living life unlimited. I'll see you next time. If you have some thoughts about this show you'd like to share with us, or if you think you're shocked to the system guest material, send me a text at 213-409-8366. Let me know what you think, or let me know why you think you'd be a great guest for this show. Thanks again for listening. Stay well.